Hi everyone, welcome to Insights with Lily Zhang, Chuan Media Europe. Today it's my serial program uh, of Beautiful Minds. And today I'm just so honored to talk about the most influential um, thinker in whole human history, is uh, Aristotle. Yeah, he's basically just a founding father of all science and of all philosophy. Basically, he's the founding father of logical thinking and uh, systematic thinking. So he's so um, predominant of all field, all scientific and uh, philosophical word. Basically, I can say throughout history, no one person is more influential than him. Basically, he influenced all philosophers and all scientists throughout history till now. And he's uh, influenced um, uh, all nationalities and all religion think religious thinkers. He's influenced um, Islamic philosophy, Christian philosophy, and uh, modern philosophy. He is the most important. Today I'm going to talk, briefly talk about uh, Aristotle's um, life and uh, his uh, scientific and uh, philosophical methods. His uh, theory on metaphysics, logics, his uh, natural philosophy and practical philosophy. He's because he basically covers all scientific field and all philosophical field. So his Aristotle is quite um, complicated to talk about, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> basically, he started logical and systematic thinking and analysis of science and philosophies. Well, Aristotle uh, was born in um, 484 BC in uh, Macedon. He, his childhood is basically unknown. Um, I think his parents passed away when he was uh, about 13, but his parents, his father um, was a royal doctor of the um, royal court of Macedon. So from early on, um, Aristotle probably had some contacts with the royal family of Macedon. That's why uh, in later years he was the teacher of Alexander the Great. And uh, when he was uh, 17 or 18, um, Aristotle uh, went to Athens to become a student of Academy of Plato's Academy. And he stayed there for about 20 years. <laughs> In Academy, uh, Aristotle, um, st yeah, he said stay there for 20 years. Basically, he was uh, the most famous student of Plato. Um, also, I think he started teaching in that. So in modern days, he's kind of a uh, uh, professor in that um, academy as well. Um, but before, just before uh, Plato's um, death, he left academy and went to went back to Macedon and become Alexander the Great's uh, uh, teacher. And he basically set up the Royal Academy and not teach just teaching the future emperor, also teaching his uh, generals, his other uh, fellow uh, students. Um, so uh, Aristotle is a great example of how philosophers influence politics and uh, the world. Um, basically Alexander the Great um, he just so influenced by Aristotle, and uh, of course uh, he gave um, Alexander the Great. He gave um, Aristotle quite a lot support as well. So, um, and Alexander the Great, he totally um, accept 
uh, Aristotle's philosophy and the logical thinking, systematic thinking. That's why, um, although Alexander only uh, studied from Aristotle for about three years, but of course Alexander the Great, he's a very talented young guy, and uh, that's why he went up just uh, conquer the world when he was about twenty. <laughs> um, Aristotle's uh, method of thinking on war hugely influenced Alexander the Great as well because Aristotle basically he kind of support war his famous saying is we make war that we may live in peace hmm so basically Aristotle uh, created the greatest conqueror in the world Alexander the Great. But um, they have some uh, different opinion on uh, for different nations like uh, Aristotle basically they, he think uh, some people just born to be slaved and uh, you should treat them equally. Some nations like well he think um, Athen Athenians uh, are more superior than other nations than like Persians. That's why um, later years uh, when Alexander conquered Persian um, he treated Alexander the Great, he treated Persians uh, differently. Um, basically he treated them equally and he made quite a lot of Persians uh, his general and high-ranking officials but um, Aristotle basically didn't agree. So um, later years Aristotle and um, Alexander the Great had some dispute with each other and uh, they didn't go the same way. <laughs> uh, but generally Alexander the Great was hugely hugely influenced by Aristotle's philosophy and the politics and political method. That's a great example of how um, philosophy, how philosophers influence um, world politics. Hmm. Even modern days, we probably have similar stories. Just like I stated at the beginning of my program, uh, Aristotle's greatest uh, achievement was his method of logic and systematic thinking. He basically created logic called classical logic and also he created a classified systematic analysis of all science, well literally all science including physics, um, mathematics, psychology, biology, zoology, poetry, literature, literature and uh, music, dancing. I can't think of any field. I can't think of any field Aristotle didn't have a system systematic method analysis about that. Basically, I can't think of anybody in human history as more knowledgeable in all field of science and philosophy than Aristotle. That's why Aristotle is such a dominant figure of all human history, of all science and uh, philosophy. I'm going to talk about Aristotle in four big parts. That's uh, Aristotle's metaphysics, logics, natural, science, natural philosophy and uh, practical philosophy. Of course natural philosophy including all those uh, sub-science and the practical philosophy including all the politics, um, economics, ethics and other methods. First of all Aristotle's metaphysics. Uh, like Plato, um, Aristotle's metaphysics is all about universal and his method is uh, uh, Aristotle, Aristotle called that um, metaphysics is the first philosophy. It's all about substance and universal forms. Aristotle think about uh, uh, 
the substance of the universe is all things are about form and matter. Aristotle examines the concepts of substance and essence in his metaphysics book, and he concludes that a particular substance is a combination of both matter and form. For example, the matter of a house is a bricks, stones, timbers, or whatever constitute the potential house, while the form of the substance is an actual house, namely covering for bodies and shadows or any other differentiate let us def just any other qualities that let us define something as a house. Um, it's just like uh, also like a statue, um, like uh, the marble statue. The marble itself is uh, the, mat the material part is the matter of the statue. Uh, so that's the matter of the statue. But the form of the statue is the idea, the design, and the meaning of the statue is called form. And um, also, Aristotle discussed uh, potentiality and uh, actuality of um, the physical world. He's uh, talking about change, growth, and uh, diminution, which is change in quantity, local motion, which is change in space, and uh, alteration, which is change in quality. So he's discussing the coming to be is a change where nothing persists of which the resultant is a property. Referring to potentiality, that is what a thing is capable of doing or being acted upon if the conditions are right and it is not prevented by something else. Uh, the example is, for example, the, the seed of the plant is a potential potentiality. But the plant itself, and also the the, the flower, the uh, the fruit, is the actuality of this concept. Well, I would say almost all the philosophers in human history are talking about um, metaphysics. That's uh, um, quite common. But uh, from, I think the biggest contribution, Aristotle, uh, for human history is his logic theory. Basically, he created logic. With the uh, prior analytics, Aristotle is credited with the earliest study of formal logic, and his conception of it was the dominant form of Western logic until 19th century advances in mathematical logic. Kant stated in the Critique of Pure Reason that with Aristotle, logic reached its completion. So Aristotle's uh, logic is uh, the foundation of uh, all logic. Um, the, the ones we are most familiar with uh, the three phases, the three parts of um, the syllogism. And the formation of the syllogism is uh, three parts. The major premises, the minor premises, and conclusion. This is the most um, famous. And for example, I think we all um, know the typical synergism. For example, um, the basic uh, logic um, three parts. Uh, the major premises is all men are equal. The minor premises is uh, White men and black men are all men. So the conclusion is uh, blacks and white people are all equal. So that's a very simple um, format. But Aristotle does not believe that the purpose of logic is to prove that human beings can have knowledge. The aim of logic is to elaboration of a coherent system that allows us to investigate, classify, and evaluate good and bad forms of reasoning. 
basically Aristotle's logic uh, just uh, uh, Aristotle, Aristotle don't, doesn't he doesn't think logic is for us to learn knowledge but really it's uh, for us to um, improve our reasoning and critical thinking he thinks so that uh, logic is apply for how we investigate things and analyze things and uh, give uh, reason to something so most important part is to improve humans analytical skill and uh, logical thinking reasoning that's what aristotle contribute to logical thinking and critical thinking in human history now i'm going to talk about his contribution in science basically he started well he basically uh, did research and uh, experiment analysis on all field all scientific field and he started make a classification of different field so aristotle's natural philosophy basically including all science yeah he just uh, uh, that's in our modern term is called um, physics biology and all the other scientific field he just covered everything uh, about his physics he basically uh, described the world as five elements earth water air fire ether ether is the divine substance like uh, in, in something in heavens so uh, Aristotle think about these five elements form our universe and uh, he's talking about motion and uh, also he's got he's got theory basically on everything we all know um, before uh, Galileo Galileo um, that's all the classical physics are talking about uh, you know if two balls um, different size the bigger ball the heavier ball will drop faster and the lighter smaller ball will drop slower but Galileo basically prove as uh, it's not right so basically Aristotle's physics um, influenced the whole antique world also influenced the whole medieval time and also basically every scientist and philosophers um, in the world doesn't matter follow him or against him but basically even if um, they against Aristotle they still basically influenced by him Aristotle also suggested that the reason for anything coming about can be attributed to four different types of uh, causes it's a material cause the formal cause is its form uh, we already talked about uh, Aristotle talking about uh, the matter and the form also the efficient cause that's the primary source which caused the, the change under considerable proceeds and then the final cause basically that's its purpose so for example the I, I, I already talked about the the statue one statue sculpture you know the the material cause that's the marble that's the material part of that um, so that's the, the material cause of the statue and then that's the formal cause which is the form of the statue the form of the statue is uh, by its design the idea how it's being crafted and the efficient cause of the statue means uh, why the statue is as a, a living thing or non-living thing why it's different what's the differentiation compared with other things i think use our modern way as just the character of the statue like uh, david why it's 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 got its own character and uh, its spirit and uh, its unique formation and then that's the final cause which is the purpose um, any great art is uh, they have a higher purpose Aristotle has quite a lot um, a beautiful uh, quotes about nature and arts 
also the meaning of arts. Like the final course, uh, the, that's the purpose of uh, the material thing. Like uh, I already talked about uh, the statue. The final course, basically the purpose of the statue is piece of the purpose of the art. Aristotle stated, the aim of art is to represent not the outward appearance of things, but their inward significance. So that's uh, just stated very beautifully, the purpose of one art piece. It's not just on the surface, and that's how we understand the four causes of uh, Aristotle. Um, I think the material, the, the form part, uh, was showing the appearance of the art piece, but the higher purpose, the final purpose, the final cause of the art piece is all about the purpose of the art piece, is showing internally what's telling us inside, what's uh, showing inside of one art piece. Just like when you look at David, it's just, just showing the beauty of courage, of human spirit, spirituality. So that, that's the purpose of art, it's the inward significance. What cause our feeling? Of course, Aristotle has done, he's done quite a lot of work on the biology part. Basically, he started biologist. He's, he, he's probably the earliest biologist. And he started classification of all the um, animal and plants. He spent many years in Greek islands to study plants and animal and sea lives and he's got a great influence on Darwin and he created evolution but uh, Aristotle just classified uh, all the animal and uh, plants world but he didn't conclude um, the evolutionary theory. Basically Aristotle is the first person to systematically study biology and also he started a classification of animal and plants and he started the method of uh, by um, first observe or an experiment and then calculate and uh, conclude one pattern of uh, scientific research and then use analytical skills to conclude some kind of method and uh, that's the start of scientific analysis. Biology forms uh, a large part of uh, Aristotle's writing. He spent two years observing and describing the zoology of Lesbos and the surrounding seas. He notes that an animal structure is well matched to function. So among birds, uh, those fishing birds, they have long legs and uh, long beak, so they can stand in the water, pick up th fish. And uh, like ducks, they have shorter legs, basically they just swimming um, in the water. That's why he said, in all things of nature, there's something of the marvelous. Nature does nothing in vain. So basically he just say um, nature create everything. Everything, all the animals and plants, if they have a form, they have a function for that form. Fundamentally, Aristotle practiced a different style of science, systematically gathering data discovering patterns common to whole groups of animals and inferring possible causal explanations from this. The style is common in modern biology when large amounts of data become available in a new field, such as uh, genetic analysis. It doesn't result in the same certainty as experimental science, but it sets out testable hypothesis and construct a narrative explanation of what is observed. In this sense, Aristotle's biology is scientific. 
Another major part of Aristotle's natural philosophy is psychology. Basically, he started psychological analysis. He talked about soul. He talked about、uh, memories and dreams. And、uh, Aristotle talked when he talked about souls. He's talking about souls of all things, including. Uh, plants, animals, and、uh, human beings. So here he's talking about、uh, the souls of、uh, plants. Basically, he called it a vegetative soul,、uh, which means that he thinks the、uh, plants, so when they reproduction and the growth, it's got a soul inside.、Um, and when he talk about animals, he talk about uh, uh, sens- sensitivity. He's talking about sensitive souls. That's about animals' mobility and sensations. Animal can, animals got emotions. They can feel. They can feel the sense. They can move around. And uh, um, then he talked about humans.、Uh, humans got rational souls, which means、uh, basically thoughts, reflection. For Aristotle, the soul is the form of a living being. Because all beings are composite of form and matter.、Um, before I talk about Aristotle thinking about the word universe is、uh, form by form and matter. So when he talk about soul, he's talking about the soul is a form of living being. I think that's、uh, when he talk about soul, he's talking about the energy, the spirit.、Um, it's probably more focused on the energy part of. Living being, because、um, actually,、uh, according to modern science, or especially quantum physics, all living things are formed by energy. We are all energy. So Aristotle, in that, I think to understand Aristotle's form、uh, or soul, when we're talking about that, we probably, if we understand that as energy form. That's probably much easier to understand Aristotle's natural philosophy. He has a beautiful say of、uh, Aristotle. He said, "The energy of the mind is the sense of life." Basically, Aristotle he created energy. This word in metaphysics,、um, Aristotle brought. The active exercise he called energia of mind constitutes life. Well, this is such a beautiful saying. Basically, it's just saying this is the principle depends on heavens and the world of nature, and it is a life such as the best which we enjoy and enjoy for but a short time. Of course, it is in this state which we cannot be, since its actuality is also pleasure, and for this reason,、um, the mind is、uh, waking, perception and thinking most pleasant, and hopes and memories are also on account of this. And Aristotle basically think about、um, thinking itself deals with that. Which is based in itself, and that which is thinking in the fullest sense,、um, it's the best in the fullest sense.、Um, thinking, Aristotle think,、uh, consider thinking itself shares the nature of the object of thought, and、uh, so thought and object of thought are the same for. That this is capable of receiving the object of thought. So basically, in, in sense,、um, the life, the essence of life is、uh, the mind, the thoughts of mind, and、uh, it's just、uh, for the actuality of thought is life. Okay, today we talk about Aristotle's logic,、um, metaphysics, and、uh, natural philosophies because of the the scale of Aristotle's work and philosophy. Also, time limit 
I would like to separate uh, the program about um, Aristotle to two parts. This today is the first part, and next time we're going to talk about uh, Aristotle again. That's the second part. Thank you very much for watching my program. If you like, please like. Also, give me the comments and please um, forward to all your friends and uh, family see if you like um, okay also of course subscribe to my channel thank you very much um, i see you next time